I consider myself a very time-based trader. If you follow me on the pre-market prep or any of the webinars, you know there's a lot of key areas of the day along with key price levels that I talk about. Today, I'm going to kind of get into the in-depth of that time of day and talk about things to really avoid. Hey everyone, lead trainer with Stocks to Trade, Tim Bowen here. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share these videos with your friends. And I tell you what, if you really, I mean like really, if you kind of want to do this stuff, that's fine. You can watch the free videos. You can check out the blog posts. You can, you know, we got tons of free stuff. But if you really want to take it seriously and really get to the next level, check out the Steady Trade team. I've done 2,000 500 webinars in four and a half years. Never been late, showed up every single trading day, live and interactive with a small group. I think it's the best way to really learn this stuff, okay? You can watch a thousand free videos, but at some point, you got a man or woman up and take that next step. Check out the Steady Trade team. All right, today we're gonna, gonna talk about midday trading things to avoid things to do things how to address this you might hear this mentioned a lot and actually you know something that i see so often repeat and repeat and repeat is just like f tech okay this is a chart from yesterday i always like to use recent examples but we see so often with this u-shaped price and volume okay not only price these are my my volume candles but volume as well and that area to avoid is really that 11 to 2 area. And you'll see this over and over again. You get that big early spike. That's our dip and rep that we love, 945, by the way. And then so many times into that 2 p.m. window, we see that reclaim of that high a day, which brings that huge spike. Now, FTEC is, you know, I would say not a textbook example of this because it did break at roughly 345 p.m. but again it's a recent example and it, you see this pattern over and over and over again the idea is what i'm talking about today is avoid that 11 2 window look for those high day breaks into the uh, end of the day now why is this okay well <laughs> you know the simple fact is most day traders are part-time traders and maybe you are and, and this is something i don't think it's talked about a lot um a lot of the volume especially in these low price stocks are people with jobs people at school people that have other things going on now something that i teach a lot is i think you know i always say i think day trading is the you know the number one best quote unquote side hustle out there i don't i mean you can sell stuff on ebay you can do web pages you can i mean there's a you can drive uber there's a million different things you can do to make some extra cash i think day trading is the number one and it's been proven i mean i day traded part-time for eight or nine years before i sold my business and went full-time and i mean i loved it it was a great way to supplement my income pay for a vacation you know pay pay for splurge on stuff what buy power tools if you know me I've got I've got kind of a fetish for really expensive like Festool power tools and it's always nice to take some trading profits to buy a thousand dollar saw you know but but anyway um, most day traders are part time traders so most day traders are trading those morning rips that dip and rip and then they're coming back at the end of the day running their scans see what's strong see what's breaking out into the end of the day that's why you'll see this midday low over and over again and I think many newer traders th don't realize that there are di distinct delineations of different parts of the day. I mean, I break the day down into several pieces. I consider it pre-market. Now for me, pre-market is that 4 a.m. NASDAQ open, uh, you know, NY some NYSE stocks trade that early as well. Not a lot of liquidity then, but remember at 4 a.m. NASDAQ, electronic trading's open, you know, there's, there's activity. Then I call pre-market up until 8 a.m. We call it the 8 a.m. shakeout, okay? That's when you're gonna see a lot of press releases. That's when a lot of bro a lot of, you know, some of the free brokerage accounts and stuff, they won't let you trade before 8 a.m. So you see a lot of momentum at 8 a.m. So then I call 8 a.m. to 9.45 the open, okay? Now again, bear with me. I mean, I know the open is 9.30 a.m. and it's 
one distinct second in time, 9.30.000, okay? But to me, the open is 8 a.m. to 9.45. Then we're talking about that area of interest. I mean, our favorite time, that mid-morning area, that's 9.45 to 11. That's when I think you should be making a majority of your day trades, your dip and rips, your high day breaks in the low floaters, okay? If you're a pure day trader, that 9.45 to 11 window is your money maker, okay? Then as we avoid the midday, which I'm gonna talk about, then we get to 2 p.m., that's when we're looking to buy those quick spikers and then put on the swing trades as well. Now, you'll notice there's like a three hour window in there where I said there's not much. Now you can trade 11 to two, but the biggest thing I'll hear people say is, they'll come to me and they'll be like, Tim, you hammer on this VWAP hold high day break. I try them all the time, they never work. First question I'll be is like, what time was it? And they'll be like, oh, it was 11.30, it was noon, it was one. And I'm like, listen, the whole reason I call it a 2 p.m. VWAP hold high day break is this is an afternoon pattern. Now, it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to work into the afternoon, but I think the high, the likelihood is much higher, okay? No trade setup works 100% of the time, but if you can base on these consistently repeatable patterns with stop losses and plans, you can minimize your gain or minimize your losses and maximize your gains. And you will see this repeat, my, my beautiful whiteboard drawing here. You'll see that big spike in price and volume, then that low in volume, as well as that sideways action in price. Now, the reason I bring up FTEC is this is exactly exactly what we want to see because even though the volume really cratered the price hung 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 and you can see it's basically two to 220 all for almost basically six hours from from well five and a half hours okay so but that is exactly what we want to see the price is holding which tells you the buyers are in control, bidders are in control. It's hug and VWAP, baby. We love hug, hug and VWAP. Then volume comes in, high at A breaks, and then that's your entry with risk down on VWAP, and you can see what FTEC proceeded to do. The wild thing is FTEC continued to spike even today. Actually, let me bring up the live chart, and you can see that even going into this morning, I mean, look at that. You, what I was showing you was 540. It went as high as 7 this morning right at the open. So you can see the continuation on these stocks. Look at that volume today too as well. Just explosive volume. And you see that repeat and repeat and repeat. So the biggest reason I want you to avoid those middays, I don't want you frustrated. And this is, when you know, when we talk about psychology, I think there's a lot of simple things that people overlook. Um, just think about how things, like even just in your in your whole day, think about those days where you like, it's just a bad start. You know, you sleep through the alarm and then you're, you know, and then it's just, then you're ornery because you're running late. Then you get in a fight with the wife or the husband. And then it's just all the way downhill all day. It's like one of those days where nothing goes right. And then if you think back and you're like, what, what happened today? Why did nothing go right? It goes back to that, you know, starting out on sleeping in, or maybe it's that fight with the wife or the husband, or maybe that's missing the train or, or, or your car won't start. Simple things that then cascade. And I tell you, with trading, especially these volatile stocks, you got to have a positive mindset, you got to be high energy, you got to be focused, and you can't be playing that coulda, woulda, shoulda game, you know, screwing with yourself mentally because you're getting chopped up midday. And now when the move comes on FTEC or whatever the stock is, now you're in that bad mood. You're like, oh, nothing's working today. You know, you took three losers or maybe you had one small winner and two losers and you're like, geez, nothing is working today. And your mentality screwed up and then you're slow to attack FTEC or maybe you skip it because you leave early for the day and you're like, ah, nothing's working. So number one, biggest thing I'm telling you, these afternoon breakouts, they fail over 
and over and over, or midday breakouts, I'm sorry. These midday moves fail at a much higher rate than the afternoon moves or the morning moves, okay? That right there should be enough to tell you, I don't want to trade it. Now, secondly, it's not like every one of them fails, okay? I mean, sure, stocks spike at noon. I'm not sitting here telling you nothing ever breaks out at noon. It happens all the time, but I think the odds are lower, and what happens is you start trading that chop, you get annoyed, you get frustrated, and your head's not in the game, okay? I'll give you one more analogy, and I promise I'll move on. Why do, like, a quarterback is having, like, a good game, throws one interception, and all of a sudden he ends up throwing four interceptions? I mean, so trading is a lot like ath- athletics, man. Or you strike out your first at-bat. You're batting. You've been crushing it lately. You come up, you strike out. Next thing you know, you go 0 for 4. It's all momentum. And don't discount the, the value of momentum as well as the devaluing of negative momentum. Do everything you can to keep your mindset right and focus on the best setups. And the best setups in these big movers is dipping rips early, late day VWAP holds, and avoiding that midday chop. So now you might be like, well, what do I do from 11 to 2? Maybe you're, you know, listen, maybe you're working from home. Maybe you're working at night. You got the whole trading day. My thing is the work is never done. Okay, you should be reviewing your recent trades, breaking them down, putting your spreadsheet, looking at your data, seeing what worked, what didn't work. There's a million books to read. I mean, we've got the book club on the podcast. Read a book, okay? What I want you doing is taking that three hours and making it useful instead of getting chopped up in midday trades. Think about the fact of, let's say you read 45 minutes a day from 11.30 to 12.15. All of a sudden, you've read 10 trading books. Or maybe you've got some uh, course materials. You've got some video. Maybe, you, maybe you've paid for a, a video package or something. Watch an hour of that. Read an hour of a book. Spend an hour reviewing your trades. Three hours of work that puts you ahead of the 90%. You want to know why 90% fail? They, are, they, want, they want to press buttons every day. They want action. They don't want to put in the work of reviewing, reading, watching videos, doing Q and A's, watching these videos. I mean, hell, listen to the steady, get on the treadmill and listen to the steady trade podcast. Exercise, there's a million different things you can do to improve your trading and not get chopped up. So that being said, hopefully, I've talked, I've talked you into bracketing your day the way I've talked about it. Drop me a comment below. What do you think about midday trading? I wanna know. Maybe you're like, Tim, I watched this video, you're full of it. I'm, I got a 90% win rate from 11 to 2 p.m. I'd like to know. And if you've got a crazy win rate like that, let me know your setup, okay? Comment that. What do you, what do you trade in midday to have a ridiculously high win rate? Because if you got it, I'll steal it and trade it myself. All right. So that being said, have a great day, everyone. Check out the Steady Trade team. Check out all the videos we've got. We've got tips, tricks, long podcasts, short podcasts, Tons of information, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.